The following was recorded live at Pop Tech 2018. Let's uh, sit and, and have Beatrice Finn join us. And we're going to talk now about a total uh, interesting story in itself, which is the experience of no winning the Nobel Prize. So you two, I guess, met before once. We three, met three, three. Yeah. <laughs> we met yeah. at a, at a uh, reception for the la last year's uh, Nobel Prize winners. She won the Nobel Prize. It was given in Norway. and. Mine was in Sweden, so all the activities were separate until the last... Uh, yeah, I just came for the last day. The last day is in s Sweden? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's, let's start with basic question. We in the US learn about the Nobel Prize Award in the morning, which means that you get the, uh, the announcement sometime at 5 a.m. Uh, in the morning. Can you tell me about the phone call at 5 a.m.? Well, I'm in California, so it was 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, th in my case, although there's no rumors that tell you anything, I, you don't know, and certainly you didn't know either. Uh, so you don't know, but I knew that we were good candidates. So uh, my call came at 2.52 in the morning, uh, and the announcement was at 3 in the morning. Uh, it wasn't a total surprise, but I did, I did go to sleep, I did bring a telephone into our bedroom. We don't have one generally. And I set the alarm for 2.50 knowing they were going to announce it 10 minutes later. <laughs> and I, I woke up and I hadn't had a call. Uh, so I assumed it went somewhere else. I mumbled to my wife it went somewhere else. I started staggering out to go find my laptop to stream it and see who got the Nobel Prize. W it was very early. In our case, they often don't give it. They don't usually give it two years after discovery. So it wasn't that I may never get it. It wasn't like the story's all over. But, uh, but as I started walking into the room, my wife says, your cell phone is ringing. And that's what the phone call came on, my cell phone. I have no idea, since I don't give anybody my cell phone number, <laughs> how they got that. But of course, you capture it any time you call mm -hmm. somebody. And what's, so what, who's on the line? How does it feel? What happens? So uh, for me, it was the president of the uh, Nobel Foundation, and he started by saying, I have good news. Uh, it's nice. He had a very, uh, a very nice uh, way to very briefly tell you so it doesn't take any time and put you at ease. Because at the end, he said, uh, so how do you feel? It's kind of a presumptuous question. Mm -hmm. I couldn't think of a single word, so I said I'm thrilled and humbled at the same time. Beatrice, what was your experience? <laughs> Where were you first? Uh, I was in the office. Uh, it was uh, just before 11 in, in Geneva. Um, and a little bit similar, like we, we, the nominations for the Nobel Peace Prize are sometimes public, depending on the, who's nominated you. It's a little bit more of a open process it's in there. It's more open, yes. Um, but a nomination doesn't mean anything. It's like three, 300 nominated. And, and being nominated means just that it's one person that's a parliamentarian in the world or a couple of professors you know, nominated you. It doesn't really mean that you're likely to get it. But just uh, a few days before they started, uh, media started speculating um, and um, listed us as one of the possible candidates. Uh, we didn't think that we were actually going to win. We were just really excited about being listed as one of the candidates. And I had this idea that they would call th 30 minutes before. Hmm. So someone had told me that. So 30 minutes came and it didn't. And we like, oh, of course not, you know. <laughs> not that I wanted it anyway. Like, <laughs> 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 you know, this is, you know. <laughs> Um, but just ma mainly kind of excited about, um, you know, s being, you know, talked about in this kind of, um, in this context. Uh, and then, you know, yeah, eight minutes or something like that before, um, the phone rings um, in the office and my colleagues and I look at each other like, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, why, why are they calling now? Don't people know that they shouldn't be calling now? <laughs> and then uh, my colleague picked up and I get for you. I took the phone and, um, and he sounded extremely Norwegian. Uh, but <laughs> somehow I was also, because we had a lot of journalists calling uh, that morning and sort of one or two, we even had journalists like standing outside the office, like just, just in case, was like, stop it. <laughs> um, yeah, so he, 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 you know, he's like, also said that I, I but he said, the, it was the uh, director of the Norwegian Nobel Committee, Olof Nielstad. And he said, you know, I'm calling with, what I hope is some good news. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wonder what that is. 
And, and you know, he, he introduced himself from the Nobel Committee, and you, you just, your mind races. So I, I think I had like 10 different reasons why he would call in my head in like a few seconds. Like, he's, he's calling to ask for someone else. <laughs> like, he, he wants to, you know, maybe he needs to find the person who actually won it. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's calling to say that we didn't win it. You know, do they do that? Maybe they do. <laughs> they, they, yeah, I, I haven't thought about this. Yeah, just this, maybe it's a joke. Um, or like, yeah, it just, and then he said, and he spoke really slowly, took forever before he got to the actual, <laughs> <laughs> I can has won it. Um, yeah, and uh, I mean, I, I was just, they have, they have a recording of it, which they actually published. And you can hear me just like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> wow, not so eloquent, <laughs> uh, but it was a bit, uh, it wasn't in the middle of the night, but I was still had like difficulties gathering myself. And then he just very quickly, well, I have to go to the press conference, so bye. <laughs> and you're like, bye? <laughs> I was like, what, what do I do now? Um, and we actually didn't really dare to believe it until we saw the, the live announcements. So we didn't celebrate, we just stood there and turned on the live stream and like, let's just make sure before we say anything and do anything or even hug each other, we just make sure. So, so I guess this is a good question to you. So organizations like I can at least I imagine have a system to respond PR-wise. Physicists, do you know what to do in terms of PR? I guess as soon as the announcement comes, there's people knocking on the door, press calling, what do you do? Uh, well, I'm at Caltech. Caltech's very professional at this kind of stuff, so I just was in their hands. And they, they uh, posted, they, because I might win it, they posted somebody near our, our house that night, uh, and that person came in and took over and <laughs> answered all the phones and so forth at five in the morning, because ours is in the morning, at five in the morning, and I went to the back of the house, and at five in the morning, I hear this rustling in the front of the house, and this guy from Caltech who was taking all the phone calls and doing everything was holding somebody from coming in the door. <laughs> and it turns out that it was 5.15 in the morning, and at five o'clock in the morning, a friend of mine goes swimming early in the morning before he goes to work, and he heard it on the radio. So he came by, but he looked like somebody going swimming, scruffy and so forth, <laughs> and so he was holding him out. So he, so I, I, I took care of that. About six in the morning, the, there was a scruffing again. I came out and he couldn't keep these people out. They were too professional and it was Reuters. Mm -hmm. And they came in and they took photographs of me and so forth, which are the photographs that went around the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, I, so, okay, you win the Nobel Prize, you believe that it's true. Then there is two months later, or yeah, two months later, mm -hmm. a lot of ceremonies. How do you prepare? You have to get the right clothing, you have to know what to wear. How did you, how did you even know what to do? Like how does it work? Uh, it's, it's really a whirlwind between the announcement and the, and the ceremony. And in particular for us, you know, uh, being a big campaign, uh, not an uh, individual that got it, but a big campaign. You know, it's also a lot of internal, how do we handle this and how do we deal? And what do you do with all this attention? Uh, in particular, when you're um, a campaigner, like we are, you want to maximize all the attention. But there's really no, you can't really prepare for this. And I feel like really you, you need to win it once and then you should win it again so that you know <laughs> what to do. Um, because even if we are an organization, like it's just like, you don't really know how to handle this. Um, and I can still see some of the first things that we did on the, on the day that I'm just, just why did we do that? Like so many of these, the first photos and the first interview that then was cabled around, it's just me like giggling, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, this is so crazy. Like, oh, I should have just been like talking politics immediately, talking like pushing the messages. Uh, you just don't know those things or you just don't think about those things in the, in the moment. Um, and then all the, you know, the, the schedule in Oslo, I don't know how it was for you in, in Stockholm, but it was intensive. It was like this press conference and this speech and that speech. And it's really hard to just enjoy it because it's just so much stuff going on and so many different events. And you know, here's the thing with the King of Norway and the Queen of Norway, and then here's the thing with this one, and then and there's these things and all the protocols. So it is a bit overwhelming. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's amazing. I'm not talking about it. Uh, recommend, you recommend it. I, I recommend it. <laughs> so, so how is it for so you? Are, it's the same in Sweden, yeah. except that maybe a difference, and that is about a week after the announcement, I got a DHL that's about that thick. Did you get this? No. And it's a huge notebook, and in it, it tells you your complete schedule hour by hour for the 10 days or nine days yeah. that we were there. Uh, each event, who's hosting it, what you wear, who you can bring as guests, 
uh, who the mm -hmm. people are that are going to be there and so forth. And it just goes hour by hour through the whole, yeah. the whole thing. Did you get that? No, I want it now. <laughs> 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 no, we, we had, I mean, because we have three days. So it's a little bit shorter, but it's only also because we're just one Nobel laureate in Oslo yeah. and, and, and in Sweden there's several. Um, but it was, so it was three days. And, you know, we also had things like, like guest lists, for example. We got 30 guests and we have a campaign of like two, three hundred people. Like, whew, there's a lot of difficult decisions there. And like you're trying to navigate all of this and trying to figure out uh, who was going to do what. Here's a question I don't know the answer. I know that for the men, there is a clear outfit, right? There's the white. Th Long th dresses for women. What, how did you choose what to wear? This is like my biggest anxiety attack, <laughs> <laughs> really. Uh, the, the ceremony is a little bit different. The, in the Stockholm, it's the very formal gala kind of for the ceremony. Mm. Uh, we have a banquet, in, uh, there's a banquet in Oslo as well, but the award is daytime uh, in the city hall. So it's and they don't tell you what to wear. So the, the men has a clear outfit, for the women, they just say long well, dress? Yeah, I know for the um, for the ceremony, it's not it's not banquet, it's not gala dress, so it's it's more um, a little bit less formal. Uh, but it, you know, just just figuring out what to wear. And these pictures are going to be like in history. I was really nervous, but I got a friend who put me up with Chanel. <laughs> so as a nuclear weapons uh, cam a nuclear disarmament campaigner, you're not really used to glamour and this kind of thing. <laughs> it's not a glamorous profession. This. Uh, so I got to go to their headquarters, their big apartment, Coco Chanel's apartment in Paris, and they like, you want some champagne? And here's all the couture dresses. Do you want to pick something? And I'm like, wow. <laughs> uh, and then we got to Oslo, and of course, there was, we had um, a motorcade. They closed the highway for us from the Oslo airport to, and I had security detail because there's like a certain, not, not because there's a threat towards us, but there's a certain threat level to the whole event in, in Norway. So, um, I had like secret service people around me for the whole time. I mean, it was just really, really bizarre. Uh, something that, you know, will never happen again, but. So here's a question to the two of you. Is there anything bad about winning the World Prize? Well, s singling out for, for science, I think the problem is singling out individuals. When a lot of science is a team but like mine, is it a big team, so. It's great for science itself because it hits the front page. People read about black holes once a year <laughs> or something. But, uh, but the fact that, that uh, we are picked and some of my colleagues that deserve it are then not, I think is the hard, most difficult part f for us. What about you? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, the every issue, like, it, it's not an individual. Uh, and we got it as a campaign, but at the same time, someone had to receive it. Uh, and I did it together with uh, Survivor of Hiroshima, uh, which was nice to bring in the victims of nuclear detonations uh, into the sort of spotlight. But at the same time, this, I didn't make this happen. It was a big, big effort from a lot of people. So similar feeling like that. And I also feel a lot of pressure now that we have to really live up to this kind of expectations. You know, Mandela, MLK, it's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> Pressure, uh, so that 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 feels uh, a little bit tough. Uh, I also accidentally tweeted something mean about Donald Trump two days before. Um, we got the Nobel Peace Prize. I got a bit of a, uh, attention. Um, I don't know if you remember because there's so many crazy things that are happening in this administration. But Rex Tillerson, there was this information like leak that he had called Donald Trump a moron. So there's a lot of jokes about you know Donald Trump being a moron. So two days before the announcement, Donald Trump is a moron. Tweets. <laughs> First question on the press conference. So, no, no, but this year's Nobel Peace Prize winner, you called Donald Trump a moron two days ago. <laughs> yeah. Is there actually an award? Do you get something physical? Yeah, you get a big uh, medallion mm -hmm. made out of 24 karat gold uh, that weighs a lot. I don't know how many ounces. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're worth close to a million dollars. The physics one, anyway, a few people have auctioned them off later, so one was recently auctioned for almost a million dollars. So you can't keep it out. So mine has to be away in a safe deposit box. Mm. I guess you have the same. <laughs> you get the, uh, the gold medal, uh, and then you get a big uh, a diploma as well. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Uh, we've, we brought it around a little bit, uh, daringly. We don't have insurance on it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants insurance. Because <laughs> um, it's also a huge like, campaign tool for us now. Uh, so here's my last question. I mean, there's a lot of differences between the two of you. Age, uh, the type of Nobel Prize, physics versus peace. 
But there are some similarities. Your physicist, uh, the physics research enabled the atom bomb. You're a physicist. You're, you're trying to abolish nuclear weapons. What are the things that you're doing with the award moving forward to kind of build on that? What changed in your life afterwards that you can leverage? I think it's really... Um, I mean, what, one of the things that obviously we want to use this prize to raise as much awareness about our issue and nuclear disarmament and the campaign and the treaty to prohibit nuclear weapons and rally people, and we try to maximize that as possible. But also, in a way, a really, it was really nice to see the Nobel Committee award uh, civil society and activists. Uh, often it goes to, especially the Peace Prize goes to a head of state or you know that, that kind of thing. And, and they are the ones who sign the documents, which is great, but you often forget to reward the, the movements that make it happen. Uh, so in a way, we're also hoping that this will inspire, and also the recent Peace Prize, Dennis McCreve and Nadia Murad, uh, also come from this kind of like activist campaigning, do it, you know, civil society background, really that we can inspire people to feel like that's the actions that matter. Uh, and I think that the connections between science uh, you know, the scientists uh, provide us with the facts and the knowledge that we then have to make people act on uh, and, and take that and put that into policies and, and, and use it. So I was going to say the same. Physicists basically discover yeah. things. Yeah. What about the, yeah. um, when you think so about it, when you so talk about ethics? So for me, the biggest surprise in this whole thing has to do with something I care very much about and always have. I, I've always cared about social issues, so I admire your and especially coming from physics, how, how it ever gets used, even though I do something that's very abstract. Uh, and it's always troubled me that uh, our government in the US is made, except for one person out of 600 in elected officers out of basically businessmen and um, uh, lawyers. There are no scientists, yet there's so many issues that affect science. Uh, that are affected by science or by technology, that we have a government that only uses young advisors to tell them uh, what to do. I, I've realized since I won the Nobel Prize that all of a sudden, as a scientist, I'm listened to. It doesn't matter whether it's something you know, really obvious like uh, global warming, but that uh, newspaper people, politicians, and so forth invite me and listen to me. So I have a responsibility that I never had before, and I take it seriously, mm -hmm. because so many of my colleagues basically aren't listened to, it's just that I have this mm -hmm. medal, and, and now I have to make good use of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, for example, this recent uh, INF mm -hmm. thing, I got several calls about what that means for, for a scientist, why it's important. It's a very complex issue, mm -hmm. we can't talk about it here, but I, but I know something about it because I cared about it when it happened and now we're going to, uh, our, reg our uh, Trump says he's going to back off of it. But my point isn't that because we can talk about that separately, but the fact that people from the press actually mm -hmm. called me about, about it is interesting. Now I have a responsibility because they won't call my colleagues. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. This is fascinating. And now you did the Nobel Prize and even spoke here. So really, thank, thank you, thank you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. For more information, visit poptech.org.